Hey guys, welcome back. We've got some exciting breaking news here today. The Atherin DDA40X is here. I've had a chance to look at it, and now we're going to go ahead and nosedive into a review. So let's go ahead and take a look. Okay, so this locomotive is in, and it comes in this packaging, the classic Atherin Genesis blue box. As you can see here, this one is obviously a little longer because, well, that's how long the DD40AX is. Now this is uh, the DD40AX 6939. I wanted 6936. Athern hasn't come out with it yet, so I got the closest I could for now. But let's go ahead and open this up, see what you have inside. This is literally the first time I'm opening this up here. And what you have is a piece of foam, and you've got the uh, manual. Uh, limited warranty card. Uh, Athern typically does some information on the prototype. Exploded parts breakdown. Uh, maintenance. Things like that. Handling and maintenance. The sound. Uh, some of the functions up through F12. Uh, the CVs, what they do. And more photographs of the DD40AX, DDA40X prototypes. And here you have it all packaged up. We'll go ahead and pull up this thing out and see. Looks like they did a really good job packaging. Now, one of the complaints from some Atherin products are the fragile parts. Now, kind of at a, at a problem with the uh, manufacturers because, especially Atherin, because they want to go really good into detail, but they also want to make sure they're durable. So they're kind of at a catch-22 on doing that. So it looks like they've improved their packaging, as you can see here. It's just well, well packaged uh, to keep things from breaking a little better. Because you want to maintain that ability to get down to prototypical scale realism. And they've got the handrail parts, foam inserts and things like that here. And everything seems to be uh, in one piece. No broken parts so far. Now we still have those ultra thin handrails, you know, and I don't expect Atherin to to uh, give up their quality for durability but they did a better packing job and I can tell you right away for this size model it has a good weight to it but we'll get to a pull test later so right now let's go ahead and set it down take a look at some of the features it is a dual tsunami decoder so the decoder is going to sounds going to fire up right away but what I'm going to have to do is shut it off real quick so you can hear me talking so F8 will silence any tsunami decoder usually with sound. Let's go over and look at some of the details of this locomotive. Now first of all, the Genesis driveline has two dynamically balanced five-pole uh, skew-wound motors and dual flywheels uh, on each of those motors. So that's the drive that's behind this. It's got an all-wheel drive and electrical pickup. Okay, Just like I mentioned before, we've got factory installed dual uh, soundtrack, Tsunami Sound, and DCC decoders. And they got this sound directly from 6936, which is the only active DD40, DDA40X on the rails today. That's with the Union Pacific Heritage Fleet. Uh, so they got the sounds directly from that, so we know the sounds are accurate. Um, you've got a dual <coughs> see-through dynamic brake intakes with grid details. Etched windshield wipers, which you can see here. The etched metal windshield wipers intact just like uh, all the parts here etched radiator and dynamic brake fan grills so if you look up here you can see the fan grills and you can see the fans as the uh, see-through fan grills a lot of great detail there and forgive me if I miss some things because I'm so excited to get this review out to you that I haven't taken as much time as I usually do with the products so just want to let you guys know that I may miss some things about this uh, locomotive as I'm trying to get this out to you. Now one thing I will warn you about is the minimum radius recommended by Atherin is 28. So I've got this uh, easily on my layout and I wouldn't suggest uh, 
uh, going under that too much because I'm not sure what it would do. I don't have access. I know it wouldn't work on an 18, but I don't know if you could push it to a 27 or something because sometimes you can, but Atherin recommends a minimum of 18. Now, you have a, or a minimum of 28, I'm sorry. Now what you have on the front, let's go ahead and look at the front and work our way towards the back. You've got the MU cables there, look nice. Um, hanging down in the very tips painted silver a lot of manufacturers don't do that uh, the handrails are ultra thin but they are intact and they are sturdy so they've done a good job uh, fixing that issue or addressing the customers concerns there as we work our way back towards the cab we've got the uh, see-through there's not tinted glass but see-through glass there you've got the nice little cab uh, window edge there and uh, the three windows on the cab the rear view mirrors. Working back the uh, etched uh, or the uh, walkway here. It's got a see-through walkway um, up. See if you go there you see the uh, see-through walkway. Now another difference in between the Bachman model is if you look in between the gap between the Union and Pacific there there's no motor showing so Atherin had to do some real good design work to make sure that happened to accurately show how that's supposed to be done like the prototype is there's nothing in between crews walk through that walkway all the time I've been on a 6936 and walk through that walkway so there's nothing blocking there there's no motor sticking out that's a great job by Atherin uh, to design something like that you've got a nice fuel tank with the details here uh, you've got the little fuel gauge there <clears throat> as you work your way back uh, again all these handrails are intact thin but accurate and as you work your way back to the rear of the locomotive, you have MU cables, silver painted. Uh, you've got your couplers installed. I'm not sure what kind of couplers those are, but they appear to be uh, plastic couplers. They're not KD metal or anything like that. Uh, same thing on the opposite side of the locomotive here. We'll flip it around just so you can get a 360 degree view. I'm just going to fire up again. And I'll shut it off again. But well, same thing, I was just showing you the other side. A lot of good detail in between all these radiator grills, fans. The lettering is nice and crisp. There's no furry, uh, fuzzy details, not furry details. Uh, on the lettering, everything looks nice. Uh, just nice detail overall on this locomotive. Just let the HD video, I highly recommend you go to HD for this video and let it speak for itself because uh, there's not enough time to cover the great detail on this. But like I said, it's all-wheel pickup, so you've got all these wheels picking up track power, so you should be in good shape. So that's uh, eight sets of wheels, or 16 wheels total, you know, picking up power, so you should be good to go. You've got the ladders here, career entry ladders, or whatever you call them. Nicely done, nice and durable. Just a great locomotive, and it, like I said, it's got good weight. You've got the roof detail with the beacon light here. We'll get to turning that on later when we do the sound and the uh, operational test. So, now that I've said that, let's go ahead and, and fire this thing up. Only requires putting it on the track. And you hear the second motor firing up because you've got two different tsunami sound decoders. Like I said, I'm going to go ahead and get some... Uh, lights on here. You can see the headlight there. All right, just had to take a short break there to find the how to turn on the beacon light up top, but we have it's F6. So F5, F6 are the effect lights, so I turn the uh, F6 on for the beacon light up there. As you can see, headlights are nice, white crisp, they still use those, they don't use LEDs yet, but uh, it's still a nice appearance, and I think that looks very prototypical. As we go over to the beacon light a little closer, you can see it's, it's one of the more prototypical looking beacon lights I've seen. I don't have any beacon lights, but... Uh, it's one of the more prototypical beacon lights I've seen. I'm going to pull some light here so you can see it right up there. I 
kind of slowly fades on and goes away almost like it is twirling around in the uh, casing. It looks really good, really good details there. Let's go ahead and listen to this, the whistle, uh, <laughs> the bell and the horn. Excuse me, I'm in steam mode, so I said whistle, but there's the bell. And now the horn. And I can tell you, that horn coming out of those dual tsunami speakers is like music to my ears. It is the single best horn I have heard to date. So, great horn coming out of those speakers. And I hope that the surround sound picks that up with my camcorder because that is just a great sounding horn. Okay, so some of the uh, functions really quick. Standard tsunami functions. F0's headlight, F1's bell, F2's horn, F3's short horn. Let's do that real quick. Uh, F4's dynamic brakes. F5 is an effect light. F6 is an effect light. Like I said, that F6 con six controls the beacon. F7 is dimmer. F8 is mute. F9 is scroll release. Kind of hear the scroll release and the dynamic brakes right now. F10 is the coupler. That's the coupler noise. F11 is the injector. and the water stop is F12, which is steam only, so that doesn't apply. Anyway, those are some of the 12 functions in this uh, locomotive's manual. Now that we've went over that, we've got the sound, we've got the bells, let's go ahead and do a test run and see. I have got 20 auto racks attached to this DD40, DDA40, and one MTH SD70. can't pull these 20 auto racks. Let's see how this DD40 reacts. Got it to 128 speed steps. It is struggling a little. It looks like I'll have to lighten up the load a little bit to get it to pull. But uh, the 20, 20 uh, auto racks is a little too much for it. So. Lighting is a little bad down here, guys, so I apologize for that. We'll go ahead and uh, clean the auto racks is a little bit much, so I'll take a quick break and see if 18 works. All right, we are moving under 18 auto racks by itself. Not too bad, as most of you know, two, uh, each auto rack is about two regular pieces of rolling stock. Overall, we still got a pretty good distance with this. Uh, this uh, DD40, DDA40. So, I'm so used to saying DD40 AX and it's DDA40 AX. But anyway, 18 auto racks, not too bad for one single engine. It's got good weight, good power, and an all wheel pickup. Alright, so I think we've covered about everything. Let's go ahead and take a look at the reverse light here. I'm going to pull these auto racks off. As you can see, you got that reverse uh, incandescent bulb as well. So that is about the size of this locomotive. We've got covered all the basic points for you, but overall, great sound, wonderful uh, horn sound, one of the best I've ever heard, and actually the best I've ever heard to date with that dual decoder. So overall, great detail. Once again, let's take a look at this reef detail. It's just Amazing what they've done with this locomotive. Really impressed, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time here on my channel. Uh, look forward to further reviews. There'll be lots more reviews, and I'll be doing more testing of this locomotive. And if I see anything I missed, I'll go ahead and put a little note in the video for you as I play around with this engine and get more comfortable with it. Again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time right here.